D. D. P. P. The Steve Dangle Podcast. With your hosts, Steve Dangle, Adam Wilde, and Jesse Blake. Let's go! There's been a bit of a disconnect between the organization and myself. I want to be healthy to play hockey next year, wherever that may be, said Jack Eichel to the entire world. And people are exploding about this. Before this our quote, show, miraculously. Yeah, this quote is, yeah, that's nice, right? Thank you, Sam. Yeah, yeah. For, you know, the, 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 that whole thing about everything breaking after our show ended uh, started with a Thomas Vanek trade from the Sabres. That's right. And, and we used to record the show at like 8 o'clock at night. And for that trade to break, it was like 11 o'clock it broke that night. I remember that. And it was so it, annoying. It was annoying. And it's been, it's kicked off ever since. So thank you to the Sabres. Hopefully that trade, uh, that trend ends. And here we are. Jack Eichel. Shoot shots. <laughs> the clip is so much worse than the written quote that you wrote or that you read there. Sorry. I didn't. I, who is the reporter who asked him? Oh, they man. said Paul, and I don't, I don't know Paul who covers the Sabers, but do not. It know. is real, real bad. So before I saw that clip of Eichel, you know, talking about uh, wanting to get surgery, and I guess we'll get into that. The more details there, and the disconnect about what to do about his neck. The first thing I thought of was Sidney Crosby, and. What happened there, remember he had the concussion issues, but it was also neck issues. I think he got a second opinion. And for a time, and Penguins fans, I'm sure, have very, you know, successfully and with a lot of effort pushed this from their memories. But there was a time where people were talking about Sidney Crosby is done in Pittsburgh. Hmm. This is a fence that can't be mended. Um, He's very angry about his either misdiagnosis or whatever it was. He just wanted to play some goddamn hockey. It had been a really long time. And what I was going to do is be really encouraging to Sabres fans and say, look, though, then he continued to be Sidney Crosby. He came back. He was fine. They won a couple cups. He's still there. People are talking about him in the heart conversation in the year of our Lord, 2021. Mm -hmm. Everything's fine. And then I heard the full quote. And um, yeah, that guy wants out. Yeah, that's this it's is gonna. gonna this is not Crosby. I remember very briefly, and I think it was Bob McCowan who took heat for this. He basically goes, "I'm hearing rumors that Crosby could be done in the National Hockey League." It was a huge deal about a decade ago, and uh, but this this sounds this sounds like a guy who is itching to get back to plan, want surgery to make that happen. Mm-hmm. And doesn't want it to be in Buffalo. Wow. Do you want to play the Jack Eichel audio? Absolutely. It's horrible. All right. And really the question bad. was asked by Paul Hamilton. He's a Sabres reporter for WGR Sports Radio 550. Okay. Whatever your thought is on that, why don't you just do what you would like to do? It's your body. It's your decision yeah, with a doctor. Work like that, Paul. <laughs> Is it is it cause a, a contract? Yeah, it doesn't work like that. I wish. I mean, yeah, you, you can't. Uh, I guess that's that's you hit the nail on the head there. You know what I mean? Yeah, okay. that's it. I mean, you. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, I'm under contract with this team, and um, they definitely hold a lot of uh, a lot of cards on what I can and can't do. So that sounds horrible. Do you do you have a thought on that, Adam? Or do, do well, you want it was, to read it, uh, for context? Brand? It's a herniated disc in his neck, and the Sabers apparently, or at least what he's inferring there, is that the Sabers won't let him uh, get surgery, which he, as you can imagine, probably wants. Um, and that is the only thing I wanted to add. Just context. Now, there's a few things I want to say, but Steve, I know you want to take this. Go get on that. Well, just just Fridge adding some because people are like, why can't he simply just get the friggin' surgery? So about this, the CBA was amended last summer on second opinions. Now reads as follows: CBA 
34.4 amended to add the following subsection. A player is entitled to obtain a second medical opinion from a physician of his choice who is not on the second medical opinion list and has not received advance approval from the club. The cost of such opinion shall be borne by the player. Upon the player's request, the club shall provide the player with all relevant medical information from the player's records to provide to the player's physician. The player shall provide all such relevant records to the player's physician. Um, the club physician shall determine the diagnosis or course of treatment, including the timing thereof, after considering any report or other records received from the player's physician. Now, I don't know if that thread continued because he had the number slash X um, but like, am I, am I misreading it that like, it sounds like they if forget the surgery. It sounds like that you're not letting them get a second opinion. That's exactly what it sounds like. Yeah. That what, why is what I'm not understanding. And like, I know he's under contract and everything, but like, okay. Like we, we talk about players like they're cattle, but he's the most valuable part of the Buffalo Sabres organization. He needs to feel better. Help him feel better. I don't it's like, it's like a Ferrari that's got a knock in its engine and they're like, eh, just play it out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like a, and the Ferrari's like, can I just go to Midas? And like, <laughs> yeah. And they're not letting the Ferrari go to Midas. Like I, I don't, I'm not understanding. I'm not understanding what the issue is. There's here. a couple things I would wonder here. For number one, if 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 they're worried, like if Jack Eichel right now announces he's going to have surgery, that hurts his trade value, but it also hurts Buffalo's ability to attract uh, human living bodies uh, because they're already a bad team and they're going to get worse. Uh, I don't think that there's any way that this team conceivably gets better next year. So. They can't really, if they're trying to trade Jack Eichel, he's just torpedoed the value anyway. But they, I think that what, what they were trying to do here is trade him before they had to worry about it. And I, I can't imagine that the cost of that surgery wouldn't be covered by insurance. And even if it wasn't, wouldn't be something that either the player or the team, I mean, it would be on the team, I would think, to pick it up because it happened at the workplace. But I, I still don't understand like it couldn't be that the surgery costs a hundred grand or something like that. The no. Gulas are billionaires. Like it, it cannot be that. So what is it? And, and I wonder if the team physicians just saying, listen, Jack, you don't need this. So I'm recommending against it. And I, and I'm not being a doctor and not knowing much about herniated discs other than they hurt. And everyone I've seen with them they do. is, is debilitating. Like is debilitated by it. Like, I don't know if, if it's, if I'm paying $10 million for Jack Eichel from a business perspective, I want a hundred percent or as close to hundred percent of Jack Eichel as I can get. And I don't care if I get uh, 20 games of them next year. Um, I want 20 games at hundred percent Jack Eichel. I don't want 80 games at 60% Jack Eichel because the Sabres do not get better at 60% Jack Eichel. They just don't. They're not a good team that way. Um, so I mean, I, I, like to me, they're, they're in sort of a death spiral, right? They have no talent to trade, so they can't make trades and the talent they do have wants out, which torpedoes their trade value. Man, and they have I, no scouting staff and it's a bad draft year. I mean, it's, it's, this is really, really, really bad. It, like when was the last time we heard a good Buffalo headline? When was the last time the Sabres had something positive? Michael Hauser. That was a cool story over the past week. That's a cool story. And like Don Hardly, Granato Steve, has hardly a headline. Hardly. Mm, no, it's, it's nice. And like Don Granato has been better than Ralph Krueger. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But I'm really grasping at straws. I wonder if you threw the players out there, if they couldn't be better than Ralph Krueger, to be honest with you, just throw them out there and let them figure it out for themselves. Honestly. I have no idea. Well, and and like that was another thing that like Greg Wyshynski pointed out is like Eichel seems to really like Ralph Krueger. It just this oh, mm, last year there were Eichel trade rumors, mm -hmm. and I think they were largely based on the Sabers suck. You know, like this mm -hmm. is a guy who's frustrated with losing. 
this sounds like a guy who's frustrating with with losing and it like if you have a herniated disc you're in like constant discomfort Mm -hmm. and it's your neck it's it's everything it's every goddamn thing someone next to you asks you a question you don't think about it you look that way you know and and it's just and then you've inflamed it for god knows how long it's it's uh and every moment, every time his neck pains him, he's thinking of the Sabres. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I'm I'm painting a picture here. Like I said, I'm not a doctor, but um, I think it sure sounds like he's very, very done. This does not. I Sabres fans, I'm sorry. Like I wanted to come on here and be Mr. Sunshine, and I wanted to compare it to the Crosby situation. And don't worry, that ended up getting fixed. It's broken. He's done. One thing I look at, I'm like, oh, Jack Eichel really doesn't want to negotiate with these guys is the fact that he hasn't filed a medical grievance yet. Because like, if there is an actual dispute amongst his uh, second opinion and the team doctors, and like, okay, here's what they're both saying, and then the evidence is just so apparent that I should get this surgery, then he can file a medical grievance with the NHL and the NHLPA. And then Dreger came out and he said that it, that hasn't been done, like no official grievance has been filed Mm -hmm. so it seems like there's some gray area obviously with what he should be doing in terms of surgery and he's just leaning hard on the you're wrong i'm not even willing to negotiate with you guys side of the of the equation which is with the sabers and he's just like not because like he can do a neutral party file a grievance and just get it all done you know but he's not even willing to talk about it it seems like so i think because he doesn't out the door is it possible, Jesse, that he just doesn't want to drag it out anymore? Yeah, because he wants it out of Buffalo. Yeah. And and here's so the thing. The he plan. does say, oh, well, you know, the teams hold a lot of cards. I think that's a veiled shot at, no, actually, I hold all the cards. Yeah. Because if if you've got a team that's really good or on the upswing with a ton of talent, um, you hold less less of that. But he is literally Jupiter in that dressing room. The The gravitational pull around Jack Eichel is immense. And that's because he's all that's out there. Uh, and so, you know, he's got all the, all the, uh, all the stuff. And if he goes and files that grievance, Jesse, maybe it's, well, you know, why do we want to, we want to, um, uh, we wanted to trade him, but you know, we're the New York Rangers and we don't know where this grievance is going to go. And then that, cause it takes it out of his hands. Right. If, he, if the Rangers trade for him, he's going to say, here's what I'm doing. And they'll mm-hmm. say, we just blew a bunch of stuff out to Buffalo to get you. So do whatever you want. Yeah, because right? the grievance solves the issue, and if he, as long as he doesn't do that, then he can get his way out of Buffalo. Mm-hmm. It's funny. I, I I keep thinking to myself, and Oilers fans aren't going to like this, but the Oilers to me with Connor McDavid were just a hair a hair away from this. Um, you know, thankfully you've got Leon Drysaddle, you know, Hart Trophy winner, guy that scores a lot. Uh, but I think you're about you know you're one bad Mike Smith season away from this. You know, with as of last year, I think it's completely changed the picture. Now they've, they've re, or they've sort of rebuilt. Mike Smith has risen from the dead and become this unbelievable goaltender. What a story. Really good, really He's been incredible. Good. Yeah. But who, who would have seen that coming? If they'd had Miko Koskinen all year, they'd be a 500 or less team, which is what he is. And we might be having this conversation about Edmonton as well. So it's, Adam, it's, it's just why goes, did you use no. this conversation about the Buffalo Sabres to dump on the Edmonton Oilers? <laughs> Because yeah. I, th- I, don't know. <laughs> I still think it's coming eventually. But anyway, um, that's neither here nor there, I suppose. <laughs> I just think we might have. I think we might have a blueprint for st- trading stars in the NHL. And I think this is a good thing. You know, when we look at what makes leagues outside of the NHL exciting, trade deadline and free agency is pretty, pretty exciting. I mean, they started talking about the end of Kevin Durant's contract like two and a half years before it ended. Um, in Golden State, they're like in the middle of winning like two championships, three championships or whatever it was. And they're like, well, what happens when it's all over? It's like, who fucking cares? They've got 120 games before that happens. And this is, you know, you start to see player movement like this. It starts to become a lot more exciting. Doesn't make Sabres fans look or, or feel good. Um, but you have to wonder too, if you're the Pagulas now, do you finally say, okay, we're diminishing our own asset. We got to do something here. I will 
I'll I'll say this, like, and I want to level with Sabres fans because, listen, you've had a terrible year, and all anyone ever does is shit on your team, including us, including myself. I I will say this, um, like, as your buddy, as someone who wishes you no ill, um, if Eichel's neck was totally fine, um, the writing has been on the wall for at least a year. And uh, it's sort of like Line A in Winnipeg where we looked at that and we like at the beginning of the season and we were like, just do it. Mm. Like either extend him or just do it. Do the thing that you've been talking about doing for years now. Just do it. Get it out of the way. Stop putting your fan base through this. Stop putting the locker room through it. Make a decision. Now this is different because Eichel is signed to $10 million and you know, number one center and everything, those don't grow on trees. Not that 40 goal scores like Patrick Line typically do, but typically 40 goal scores score 40 goals. So uh, that's that's a conversation for later in the show, maybe. But the Eichel relationship with Buffalo being done has been pretty obvious for a while now. It's just more done. Mm. It's just more obvious. And I think the sooner the Sabres do this thing, the sooner they'll be able to move forward. Look at the Islanders. When they, when well, I was about to say get rid of, when they lost John Tavares for nothing, which the Sabres will not do, they're not going to lose Jack Eichel for nothing. They'll get a King's Ransom. Even if it's a disappointing one, you'll still get more than nothing. Um, when, the, uh, when the Islanders lost Tavares and then they went in free agency and they got like, Leo Komarov, who I love, but for too much money. And mm-hmm. Valtteri Filppula for too much money. And then they trade for Matt Martin and the Leafs somehow uh, get out from under his entire cap hit. We were all, and Andy Graziano, when we had him on the show, when Tavares signed, who covers the Islanders, and I was getting Islanders fans texting me, everyone, including Islanders fans, were like, this team is about to suck. And they made an entirely new identity. Mm-hmm. And and look at them, they're great and they've been great for a few years now. Yeah, but Barry Trotz. But ba- okay, and the goaltending coach. Who's the goaltending coach? I keep forgetting his name. I forget too. But like Adam, these are all changes you can make. You can then uh, focus your energies to different places once you've done this one thing. Just do this thing now. Th- this is ignoring the right or wrong here about how they're handling Eichel's injury. But for the Sabres fans who are now mentally preparing themselves for that day, I'm here to tell you, I think that day might end up being a great thing for you and your team. And that's not an insult at Eichel. I think he's going to thrive wherever he goes. He's a good, Jesus, he's such a good hockey player, man. Mm-hmm. He's a really good hockey player. You'd be dumb to bet against him. Um, but it, it's obvious. It's obvious. We're done here. We're done here. Move forward. Figure out what you got to do to move forward and then just do it. So what, what is Jack Eichel worth? An injured, herniated, disced Jack Eichel. The, well, the sooner you get him surgery, the sooner um, he's in games. So the sooner, uh, the, the, the sooner he gets surgery, the higher value he has, I think. Um, but whoever he goes to is going to want a word on that. They're going to want to offer their opinion. So maybe the second opinion he's waiting on is a different team. Uh, I don't know. And the $10 million cap hit, um, I think, makes it so that it's impossible to get fair value. Uh, you, you'd you have to ask for any team is going to have to give you players off their roster. Mm-hmm. And they're probably going to be a good team. So they're not going to want to give you anybody good so that you're going to get a pile of shit. And to supplement the pile of shit, you're going to have to ask for picks. You're going to have to get prospects, but it's not going to be like, man, I've seen people talk about the Rangers and oh yeah, they're just going to give up Lafreniere. Um, I, 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 guys, I don't, I don't think so. I, I maybe, I mean, if I'm the Sabres, I certainly ask for him. Um, ask for him and Kako. I don't friggin' care. I want the first overall pick from one year and the second overall pick from another. But like, look at the Rangers cap situation. Like, how do you do that? How do you just 
have a $10 million player go poof. And now he's on your roster. So few teams in the league can do this without seismic shifts. Like I was, I was just thinking about like, like a guy, like what if you could organize a three-way trade that includes a guy like Tyler Johnson, dude, that's 5 million bucks. You're only halfway there. Mm -hmm. So the salary cap, uh, makes these blockbuster deals with true superstars harder and harder to do. Question. You're Ron Francis. And you say, we'll take Ocpozo's deal or we'll take Skinner's deal, but you got to give us Jack Eichel too. <laughs> There's, if it's Skinner, that's $19 million that's just gone from your, which the Pagulas are going to love. Well, and now if you're the Buffalo Sabres though, uh, you get nothing. You're all the prospects and picks that you wanted. You don't get you, No, that's Skinner. That's Skinner. You want like, bro, you give us Eichel and Skinner and we'll give you like a third. <laughs> like th this is, this is what the salary cap does. Like for a team to shed 19 mil in one trade. I unheard of. I don't Ron think it's ever been done. Ron Francis is well acquainted with Jeff Skinner, though. And, that's, you know, like that's sort of what I was when I saw this sort of sort of thinking is that like, you know, like you, it sounds crazy because it is crazy. But why not? Like, does does Jack Eichel does, does sorry, does Jeff Skinner's contract hurt you so bad that you don't get Jack Eichel? Come on. You get Jack Eichel for a or new it franchise. Could, it could like uh, we're in. It's a, it's a copycat league. All leagues are copycat leagues, right? You know, one team starts shooting a bunch of threes. Oh, okay. We all shoot threes now. And <laughs> now we're in this three era, right? But yes. in hockey, we, it, managerially, we appear to be entering the dawn of the three-way trade era. And it's, and it's necessitated by uh, COVID, obviously, and the flat cap. If I'm Seattle, I'm calling everybody anyway. Mm-hmm. Seattle should be talking to every team in the league about three-way trade scenarios where maybe they don't end up with a uh, Eichel, but Hey, we'll take on Skinner. We'll take on Ocpozo or we'll help eat half of Skinner. We'll help eat half of Ocpozo. They could even, <laughs> they could even potentially, I don't think this is going to happen, but they could eat like half of Eichel. Or yep. a percentage of Eichel. Yep. You know what I mean? What if all of a sudden Eichel's cap hit is eight mil and you gave me X, Y, and Z and it's two mil against my cap? It's a different conversation. It's a very different conversation. That's That should be every conversation Seattle has. I mean, and you could have two centers making big money on a team if Jack Eichel's making eight. Like, for God's sakes, the Leafs have two centers making 11. The Preds eight. had like three. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and, and so, you know, that's the, that's the interesting kind of um, uh, wild card going into this is uh, the other thing what we don't know with Seattle is we don't know what their stated goal is with, with the golden Knights. When we were doing those, um, those shows talking about it, we figured the golden Knights would want to build the team. Like we'd seen the Leafs being built, like, you know, strip it back, get a bunch of young guys, you know, fill the roster with some players and then draft a bunch of really good players. And hopefully you're good in five years. The golden Knights are like, no, we're going to do this now. And by the way, don't be surprised if you see the golden Knights in the Jack Eichel sweepstakes at some point, because that's just what they tend to do. They tend to go right. and get the best player available, the most expensive player available and still make it work. So, um, I, I wonder what the stated goal of the Oakview group slash Ron Francis slash whoever else is there. I wonder what their goal, goal is. Is it, is it to be, good right off the bat and bring fans in and see the similar excitement to what we've seen in Vegas? Or is it, ah, oh, well, we got more of a three to five year plan. Yeah, we want to be good. Yeah, we want to be competitive. We squeak in. That's great. But we'd really like to compile draft picks and be absolutely dominant. I need, someone to, I need someone to send me any proof that anybody thought Vegas was going to be good. Like well, right out of the gate. I don't yeah. think anybody did. And it's hockey Twitter. So usually people go, hey, you know, and, and I mean, I do it. As they should. Why not? Well, exactly. If you're right, let the world know. Shout but out for the I rooftops. Don't, I don't remember anybody going, oh, yeah, this team with like Cody Eakin as their number two center and William Carlson, who no one had heard of. Other, Portsy barely knew his face, probably. And he came from Columbus. 
you know, and oh yeah, James Neal, he's just going to score every goal for a little while. Mm -hmm. And Mark Andre Fleury is going to be the best he's ever been in his mid thirties. And William Carlson, who has like a career high of eight goals is going to score 41. Like, come on, come on. Like they, they did some moves that were crafty and, Oh, I like this. Oh, that did really well. And like their, their, their de facto leader was Derek Engeland. Like I, I, guys, guys, no one, no one thought Vegas was going to be good. It was such a small percentage of the hockey world. Um, so if Seattle gets a good team or they end up being good, I don't know if they'll know it. Like, mm. I, I think it'll be the same conversation again. That's, that's the only way to have an expansion team be good is the way Vegas did it. Give opportunities to a bunch of guys who never got it before, but you couldn't possibly know it'd be good because you've never seen it. There's the, an expansion team cannot be good the same way that any other team is good. If, if that, does that make sense? It does. It does. And it, and uh, it reminds me every time we talk about it of my favorite Twitter interaction of all time, Justin Bourne tweeting, man, whoever is on the Columbus blue jackets who didn't believe in William Carlson needs to be fired. And the guy tweeted him <laughs> and said, excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> and then deleted his Twitter account because everybody was like, no, you're still in the wrong, man. I don't it's know. All who about, wow. It's all about different roles. You know, most players, you put them on your top line, I think will actually succeed mm -hmm. because throughout their careers, they've been the best, which is why they're in the NHL. Case in point, Leaf fans, have you had a look at what Alexander Barabanov is doing in San Jose? <laughs> that takes right? nearly a point a game. <laughs> he's got like six and eight. That's Somebody's also got to score. score. Yeah, score effects as well. I agree. Like, you can't. I agree. <laughs> you can't take the stats from a team that's that bad. Mm -hmm. I mean, though, like he's doing well. He's doing well, and he's in a situation that complements him. Um, I love how I love how deep we're going in on Seattle now. And it's um, fun. It's fun to. Start I'm excited for it. I it is fun to start talking about. I'm just so dialed in on the playoffs and figuring out what the hell's going to happen. And uh never mind. I was about, I was about to go in on the Leafs. Anyway, Seattle could be a factor in any Eichel Buffalo whatever uh conversation and Adam, I think you're right. You're going to want to knock on the Jeff Skinner door and see who's behind it. No, mm -hmm. so on September October 10th whenever the 2021-22 NHL season starts I picked a random date is Jack Eichel still a Buffalo Sabre no not a chance Adam no no he's not no I don't think so Jesse what do you think I'm I'm on the same side as you guys. I okay. think. All right. Well, I thought you were going to choose the other side. Just be like, nah, screw you. Chaos. I can see it. Like there's a yeah, path to possible. him sticking around and then just maybe it still doesn't work out and he gets traded at the deadline. Because I think your packages, your packages at the deadline seem like a little bit more. Really? You, you know what the teams are. So you know where some of the draft picks line up. So I feel just like the you, money, the money, though, yeah. the money, the his money, neck. the money situation is a little tough. Yeah, his, his neck. You know what? Damn neck. Maybe what? his neck is the thing that keeps him there. Man, I don't know. It's, I, it's man, a, I don't get it. It's the sort of I'm sure people tuned into this waiting for us to just oh, go in and carve the sabers, but it's such a completely confusing situation that is on the precipice of yikes. Mm -hmm. But. I am confused enough by it that I feel like there's something we haven't heard yet. And I would imagine by the time this episode is up, the Sabres will have said something. Well, I don't think they can't. Okay. Well, uh, let me say this. If you wanted somebody to carve the Sabres, here it is. It feels like the Pagulas just hired their buddy down the street who says, I watch hockey sometimes. And that's not to devalue Kevin Adams as a former player and a person that's been involved in hockey for most of his life. But I, I have yet to see anything from him that leads me to believe that he's a mind brilliant enough to carry a smaller market team on a shortened staff. It takes more brain power to do it with less brains. And I, have not, I haven't seen a single thing yet that leads me to believe that Kevin Adams is the guy. And that's not that doesn't mean Kevin Adams isn't good. It just means you got to be a genius to kind of fight your way out of this one. 
And I don't see anything from the Sabres that leads me to believe that that's any sort of action plan in place that that's what they're going to do. Adam, can what I... are they doing? What do you think they're doing right now? What do you think is going on at Buffalo HQ at the Sabres headquarters? Are they just, are they just walking around the office, looking around at each other, all three of them? You know, it's super <laughs> cool to live in the States. We could all get our vaccines. Uh, well, what else, what Adam, else they have a really important scout meeting. That's where they with, call with the their scout. scout. The yeah. scout. And uh, so to, Hopefully his name is Scout, by the way. I just, if they're going to hire one guy, it better, his name better be Scout. It's a little too perfect, right? You think to, so? To add to your Ron Francis uh, theory in there, by the way, we were ripping on the Sabres to uh, go out and get an assistant GM, and they did. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jason Carmanos, who I believe would have worked with Francis yep. while they were with the Hurricanes. Interesting. So and he was, is he really, he's obviously related to the, to the Carmanos family. Yes, I want to say wasn't okay. Remember, like one of them, like either sued their son or sued their dad. Peter Carmanos, the owner, sued his son. No, no, Peter Carmanos was sued by his son because his son and I think a couple of the other kids were worried about him squandering their inheritance. I don't remember because there was, was a Jason. trust fund set up, and I believe how it works with rich people is I'm going to put this amount of money aside for my children. And then the rest of it, I'm just going to play with. And I think he was trying to dip into their trust fund that was set up for after he died. Mm-hmm. I believe that if I'm wrong on those details, I apologize. Man, to be rich, I yeah. would very much like to be that. The um, lawsuit, by the way, was settled in mediation. Who was it? Back in 2016, uh, Carmanos was sued by his son for $105 million. Peter. It's his son, Jason. Uh, do, 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 do. I don't know which son. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, there's there's a connection there, and like this again with the Sabers, like to oh, talk it was about- all three sons. Oh, yeah, all three of his wow. sons sued him, and Jason is one of them. Yes. I believe. Yes. Okay. Oh. Uh, so yeah, that was settled in mediation. So they're all good. Whoa. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, so it's pretty aggressive. But anyway, listen. It, no uh, deals with the Canes. Then I think. <laughs> I think that that the long and short of this is, um, it's you know you've got to really, you got to have a genius at the helm. We'll see where Kevin Adams stands. But right now, I'm not really impressed with what I've seen. And to be honest with you, it was never a fair fight to begin with. Well, you know, like Botterill the, got way more support than this. Look at the Sens. Look at the Sens who are ending the season fantastically. No one looked at that team on paper and went, yeah, they're great. Mm-hmm. But I did look at them and I said, young and pain in the ass. And they are exactly as advertised. They have an identity. They're the pain in the ass team. They're the we can't play them hungover team. Mm-hmm. Usually, bottom of the barrel. We can't play them hungover. We can't play our backup against them. You know, it's it's just we're not going to have a fun night. Ottawa Senators are not a fun night. And DJ Smith, I think, is the is the fuck you coach. He's he takes the players mm-hmm. and he goes, look at what everyone says about us, mm-hmm. and then look at who we are. We're, we're not what they say we are. Fuck them all. They, if they can get a coach who instills that in the team, the, like you said with Tortorella, the squeeze of blood from a stone sort of thing, I, I think the Sabres can be decent quicker than you think. But it's a, it's a culture thing. And what DJ Smith has been able to do, what Pierre Dorian has been able to do, the Sabres should actually be jealous of it. And they should be studying it. And they should be trying to replicate what the Ottawa Senators are doing. Also worth noting, you know what the Sens have? Prospects. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You need scouts, guys. Wow. You need wow. scouts. I, I don't. That's that's the craziest thing. The Sens have the Sens have done a really good job too of trading for other people's prospects as well, because you know when you don't have a scouting staff, augment it with other people's prospects. I OP, and like yeah, you know me. They've they've drafted well. You know, they've been able to get goaltending out of yeah. everybody except their starter, who I think has been injured. Um, no, the, the Sabres, you got to make it fun to play there. Like the Sens look like they have fun all the time, mm-hmm. every game. Mm-hmm. 
Sabres, it's it's awful. It's awful. You need a and I, us against the world attitude. I just note about the Sens as well. Since February twelfth, they're eighteen, fifteen, and four. Wow, dude, that's pretty that, good. That's that was a really month good. into the season. Yeah, February twelfth. Less. It was a month less a day. That's pretty cool. That's they're pretty cool. they're not bad. For comparison, by the way, this is a tweet from Mike Kelly at Mike Kelly NHL. The Jets' record in that same time frame. 19 17 and 2. So the Sens have racked up more points than the Jets in the same time period. The Jets, who bought at the deadline and just clinched a playoff spot, I believe are three and nine since the deadline. Not good. That Edmonton Winnipeg series is going to be something else. Oh, yeah. I can't wait. That is just going to be so much fun because you just don't know what you're going to get. Like if you get Vesna Connor Hellebuck. Uh, it's a different it's a different game well, but if you like, don't it's over i mean the the oilers are just murderers right now it, who's the oilers who's well, the like, I, McDavid, all I know, Dreisaitl and tyson berry's secondary assist i was laughing man i was laughing they when i saw connor hit 100 points and i go wow he had a four point night what was the score 4-3 it's crazy <laughs> he was in on all of them Oh, my goodness. By the way, are we? do you want to transition to Connor? Sure, let's do it. Dinner time can be chaotic, but with Freshly, it's easy. Their chefs take care of your meals a few nights a week just to take the pressure off, which is kind of nice. Grocery shopping and cooking can be a pain, especially right now. And with Freshly, you don't have to. Your meals arrive cooked and fresh every week, so you just keep your fridge stocked and skip the trip to the store. Ordering is easy, too. You just go to visitfreshly.com and choose from over 30 delicious, satisfying, better-for-you meals like steak peppercorn, Sasha's baked penne, and chicken pesto bowls. I'm telling you. Now, Freshly can also fit your lifestyle, too, with a variety of plans and meals to pick from that work with your dietary needs, preferences, taste, size. And now, if you listen to the STP, you can try Freshly for just six sixteen per meal. Stop searching the internet for healthy food near me every night and live freshly. So right now, again, Freshly is offering a promo. You get $40 off your first two orders when you go to Freshly.com slash STP. Stop stressing about dinner. Just go to Freshly.com slash STP for $40 off your first two orders. That's Freshly.com slash STP for $40 off your first two orders. Because mm-hmm. that, I, <laughs> I just, I brought up his game log. Oh, it's stupid. So his last game with no point, <laughs> His last game with no point was April 29th. Since then, three, four, two, three, four. Mm-hmm. You are a mutant. Good Lord. How is that even possible? How is that even possible? And he's got games to spare. That's goofy. Three straight games with a power play point. You know, like th- th- this guy, and he's not playing an unbelievable amount of time he he played less than 20 minutes in two of his last four Mm -hmm. this guy is i don't know how you stop him it's like i said with justin hall four to seven games of that shit in a row yeah have fun and if you're the jets what's your answer for that well and it goes back to what you said in the last episode about their best players being not great in their own end what so it's none of your forwards because none of your forwards can handle that shit. Could Pierre Luc Dubois? It's, I, th- Adam, that's a yes. That's Could he? your well, you'd have to, he can try because I mean, everyone's and, got Shife and try. Wheeler are not going to, right? They need no. to score. Everyone's got to try. Um, but like on the back end, like if, if you're, if you're looking at the Canadian division landscape heading into the trade deadline. You got to be, if you're the Jets, you got to be thinking, all right, we're going to get one of the Leafs or Oilers. And your deadline acquisition was Jordy Ben. <laughs> Man, that's not good enough. Like, what, what's your, is the plan to like staple Dylan DeMello on him? They might say, well, we got Pierre like, Dubois. It's, it's going to have to be like a Corson Yashin thing, mm-hmm. like to, to go that far back. You're going to have to staple a forward to this guy. And Dubois, pff, man, I hated him in last year's playoffs. So he's he's I mean, he's the best option the the Jets have. And I don't know who you put on a line with Dubois, but you don't let Shifley or Wheeler or Connor get anywhere near McDavid. 
because he'll eat them alive. If you're, let's say you're Pierre-Luc Dubois and you've heard from Paul Maurice, this is going to be your job. And Steve, tell, talk to us like you are Paul Maurice and you're breaking the news. Pierre, uh, today is the opportunity for you to change the story of Pierre-Luc Dubois. You know, everyone looked at you as the soft kid when you came here. You took your ball and you went home in Columbus and you showed up here. You got injured. You haven't had a good time since you got here. Let's be honest. <laughs> Let's rewrite the story on Pierre Luc Dubois. Game once tonight, you go out there and you get a piece of Connor. He's going to, if you're the Oilers, okay. So McDavid's job is to be McDavid. Mm-hmm. Dubois's job is to be the if uh, this is our assumption that it's going to be Dubois. Dubois's job is to be the anti McDavid. So if you're Zach Cassian, for example, mm-hmm. your job is to erode Dubois like a rock under a waterfall. You got to be in his kitchen every opportunity. Like, I don't know who, who are on McDavid's wings. I know he usually plays with dry saddle. I'm trying to think of who the other guy is. If you're Darnell Nurse, every time you go into the corner, you're nailing Dubois. If you're Zach Cassian, every time he's in open ice, you're getting a piece of him. Every time the whistle blows, you're face washing him. You're sticking him. You're, you're, you're doing, you just need to make his life miserable. Uh, According to Daily Faceoff, it's either Dominic Cahoon or Yessi Puyarvi. I'm assuming because Dry Saddle does move up, but they've got him listed as the second line center right now. I, I think it's been Puyarvi a lot. I, I know they've had a lot of line juggling. Um, mm. Boy, that's that's going to be a fascinating series because the Oilers have been so hot and the Jets have been so bad. Mm-hmm. And they're they're the two three matchup. There shouldn't be that much of a discrepancy between the two. Well, there's, what is it, nine points now? 68 to 59? It's a big it's, discrepancy. Man. I mean, the Oilers man. are the reason it's taken the Leafs so long to actually put the clinch on the division. It's they true. were on, they're on a tear. It's true. And it's not like the Leafs have been bad. No. Like, they both winning. barely lost any games. Well, am I the only one that thinks that series won't be competitive? Won't be competitive. Yeah, no, I think the Oilers. I don't think so, I don't think so either. Yeah, I think we're looking for ways to make it competitive. Yeah, I feel yeah. like all of these are like a stretch. Like, well, goaltending is the yeah. only thing, and the, maybe yeah, yeah goaltending right. is the only thing that would make it competitive. Yeah. If the right. and it would have to be the Jets is very good and the Oilers is very bad. Mm-hmm. If they're Mike both Smith average, twenty or, and six. If, He's dude. He's been very good. He's, he's been, been amazing. Very good. Yeah. And they've even won a few games where he hasn't been. You know, like the, he's just really, really good. I, getting getting back to McDavid. Okay. Oh, sorry. What did you want to say? Well, there? what I was gonna say is maybe it's not Pierre Luc Dubois' job to shut down McDavid. Maybe it's it's Hellebuck. Uh, it's dude. and maybe it's just that's the only thing you got. I mean, good luck. Accept it. Yeah. yeah. Good luck. Try um, that for four times in a seven game series. Well, because so, it only take four times, right? <laughs> yeah. Well. Well. Yeah, I, I mean that's what I, I thought the Oilers would handle Chicago. So you know you never know, mm-hmm. man. But mm-hmm. uh Mitch Marner and Brad Marchand are tied for third in NHL scoring with 67 points. Third, tied for third. They're the third best. The NHL has hundreds and hundreds of players. Those two are tied for third. Right? Cool. Just to emphasize third. Where are they? Third. You know if how many players the- have more points than them? Two. That's it. Two. How many points did they have again? 67. McDavid has 68 assists. <laughs> he's a mutant. This shouldn't be possible what he's doing. It's and um <laughs> Nick, who I play NHL with, had a very good tweet. He's like, McDavid's about to hit a hundred points, and the NHL is gonna send out like a tweet and call it a night. Like the, this league is not putting enough. Well, what, is, on, what do you want them to do? Hype the shit out of it. I think they have it, been. Not it's whatever they're doing. It's not enough. Like Mick, okay. dude. This, but is, it's not. It's not like this hasn't been done. Like there are better. What did Mario did it in thirty four games? No, but this is the thing, Jesse. He's <laughs> he's the he's you doing star right now. He, he's on yeah. pace for if this was an eighty two game season. It would be 155 points. Nobody, or no, 
He'd tie. Steve Eisenman has the highest scoring season by a player not named Wayne Gretzky or Mario Lemieux. And I think it was 155. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Which is what McDavid's on. (laughs) So he's on pace to, he's on what is the best non Gretzky or Lemieux season. Yeah. And when did those guys retire? It was quite some time ago. I'm sorry. It's not an 82 game season. So like you can't, you can't just say like he would have done that because that's so far from anything we can fathom because it's not going to happen. But I I think they've been doing a decent job. Like there's so much hype around it. Everybody's talking about it. What more do you want them to do? I, 100 I points. Go, go now go now go win a playoff round. You know, win the second one of your career. <laughs> go and do that. For, for any Oilers fans who just rolled their eyes, believe believe me, we're thinking the same thing about Matthews yeah. and the league. Oh yeah. I'm like, I, okay, I, go, get the, right, go no, get the go Rocket. Or go get the Rocket and now go win a playoff series. It, yeah, it's meaningless if you don't win a playoff yeah, round. Cuz who cares, right? right? Who cares? That's why I'm um, like, okay, we've seen guys do 100 it was it's everybody's hyped around it for the regular season now come next wednesday i think when the playoffs start i'm like win something now win four games mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um the uh <laughs> no you're right uh it was funny rob rossi uh who is a penguins reporter for the athletic was tweeting about how he thought sid should should be the unequivocal heart winner and he said it's you know it's it comes down to the way the heart's written right it's best player to his team and, and it's anti Pittsburgh bias, right? Which you what? know, that's okay, but that's <laughs> how Rob exact words. He, we've roasted Rob on this show before. He had that. He had that video. I remember when Washington and Pittsburgh were playing in the playoffs, and I forget what him? happened. And then Rob just sat in the stands. He's like, "It's coming for you, Washington. Barry Trotz, we're coming for you." Like it was one of those. Like, yeah, literally, it was like the ultimate. Well, oh, Sid is the cream of the crop there, Ovi. <laughs> And he's going to rise to the top here. Yeah. Oh, wait, that's God. what it looked like. So Rob Rob <laughs> speaks in uh, hyperbole, to say the least. I think you we think? have him on to make some big sweeping statements for yeah. sure. But <laughs> Pittsburgh's had a great year. And if Crosby comes second in heart voting, awesome. He should. But Connor McDavid is the best player to his... If, to me, how is it that you can be the best player to your team and not also be the best in the NHL? I do, I do struggle with that. I know the wording's there. And it's supposed to be, and I've tried to play with this for a long time, but how, how can you actually give an award, a prestigious award to a guy that you're like, Hey, he's not the best, but he's on the, he's the best on a shitty, look at this shit that he's got to work with. <laughs> Dude, he's not like the guy we need to give an award to fuck this hundred points in 56 games. What about this shithead with his cast of bums, but he's good. Like what kind of Listen, award is that? Crosby is magical, Amazing. mystical, wonderful. Uh, the Penguins clinch first in the Wait, East. Cody which, Cece's a Norris candidate. It's amazing. Dude, how good is he's he? He's been man? great. He's been yeah. great. <laughs> get, hey, Cody, go get it. Go get yeah. it, man. Uh, I just, I'm not mad at you. <laughs> go go do it. Sidney Crosby doesn't suck because Connor McDavid is better right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, well, be- you put the two in a playoff series. Well, maybe we'll actually get to see. But you, unfortunately, you got to vote before that, man. And, like, he's got 100 points. Like, he's got 33 more points than his next closest non-teammate. And the guy who's second in NHL scoring is still on his team and, like, 21 points behind or something ridiculous like that. And isn't he, like, 20 points up on Marner and Matthews, too? Like, he's, he, he's more, way more. more. Like, guys, guys, I, I don't know – how like listen rob's doing his job yeah which is getting you to click getting you to talk about him for the rest of you like i don't know how you genuinely believe that shit (laughs) i don't know how you genuinely believe anybody else is the mvp this year and 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 here's what i would say pittsburgh you've seen some mvps before let edmonton have this they've never seen one pittsburgh doesn't (laughs) They, they're they're like we know, Edmonton, you know, no one, no one good has ever played for the Oilers. Ever. <laughs> ever. It's not like they've had the award locked up since what 2017 on that team. It's ridiculous. Since since Hall won it. After that, I think it's been an Edmonton Oilers award, has it not? I'd love to know what percent of all heart trophies have gone to a Hab Oiler or Penguin. It's got to be like 50 at least. It's got to be at least probably or scoring titles is another one. 
And uh, McDavid only has one, by the way. Hart? It was, yeah. No. Yeah, he won in 2017. It was McDavid. That was his first one. Was and 18 then Hall? 18's Hall, 19's Kucherov. Kucherov. 2020 is Dreisaitl. So we need to get McDavid some more heart trophies just for just so when we look back historically that we're not like embarrassed by ourselves of these times and be like, McDavid should have won like five straight hearts. So let's get him some more in this little era. Yeah, there were people voting like fucking hipsters. Come on. He should have had 17. We all know that. Or sorry, he had 18. 17. Yeah. He should have had 18. We know that. Yes. Kucherov History. had an unbelievable year in 19. I, I don't think you can take that away from him. And I'm sorry to Leon Dreisaitl, but I thought McDavid deserved it last year too. History is is riddled with those. Or you look at it's. I brought it up before, but you look at the Vesna and you go, Jim Carrey. Mm-hmm. Really? It's mm-hmm. Hashik, 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 Jim Carrey. Hashik, 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 Hashik. Wow. <laughs> who is this amazing phenom who came in and he stole the, oh, it turns out he wasn't even good literally was not even good right oh my god like these things like they should be a reflection of history when you look back on them like that's that's all i want out of these awards just okay in 10 years in 20 years when kids grow up and they look back oh gretzky won uh eight seven straight heart trophies during this they're during the 80s like that's Mm -hmm. that's an accurate representation of history and how hockey was at the time this guy was the best seven straight years we just gave it to him mcdavid's the best player right now let's just give him some more heart trophies because he deserves them and history should reflect that and if you're the mvp of the playoffs i got great news for you there's an award for that too yeah (laughs) actually there's two one of them is a con Smythe. The other is the one that you actually play for. <laughs> like, guys, he's the best player this regular season. End of discussion. Like, the, the, there isn't a there isn't a counterpoint here. He's got a hundred <laughs> points. Hundred. Stop. Stop. A point for per period player. If if Crosby <laughs> broke Sittler's record twice in the games remaining. I know. He would still be like 20 points back. <laughs> like, stop, stop. It's crazy how you can lose a game when you're guaranteed to have a guy score a point, a period. Yeah. yeah. A period. <laughs> right? Like the last, last 30 games, he has 31 or he has 29 points. He must like, walk in that lose? dressing room and just say, how dare any of you? Right? <laughs> how how the audacity of you? <laughs> Here, like, did you, have you seen... I might as well bring it up because once he hit a hundred, I saw a few people. <laughs> people were going, "All right, here are the highest scoring Oilers forwards." Okay. Oh yeah. So McDavid's got a hundred points. Mm-hmm. Dry has got seventy nine. Then you got to go all the way down to forty six points. Oh, that's Tyson Berry though. Throw him out. He's a defenseman. Mm-hmm. Then it's Darnell Nurse, thirty six. Mm-hmm. Oh. Throw him out. He's a defenseman. The next highest scoring non McDavid or dry sidle forward is Ryan Nugent Hopkins with 33. And then Jesse Pugliarvi, who Oilers fans have been like, he's amazing. And he's having a good season. He's better than I thought would be possible after the you know start to his career that he's had. He's got 25. And then it's Yamamoto as their last Oilers forward with 20 or more points. And he's got 20. I'm not saying the rest of the team sucks, which some people very are, but what what he's doing is jaw dropping, unbelievable. And I say this with nothing but reverence. I every time I watch the Oilers, I I don't understand how they're un, not undefeated. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. dude, I don't understand how you lose a game with Connor McDavid I, on your roster. I have a question. Because McDavid is so good, he probably makes the players on his team look worse than they actually are. Right? Like, that, oh, yeah. I think there's a little bit of that going on. Is it possible that sure. it's like, you know, you got this guy and you got this other guy? Let's not forget about Dry Side, all Hart Trophy winner, you know, Art Ross. I think he's won the Art Ross a couple times. You know, he's Rocket. I think he won pre- the Rocket. Pretty amazing player as well. If. You got those guys, you just, again, you just go with the competent bum angle, right? So it's sort of, you know, player, guy who doesn't fuck up. Fine guy who doesn't fuck up. 
that's all you really need to do. They're above. And, it, and they're proving that. Again, I still think they're going to have to solve the goaltending problem. I keep with the Oilers. I keep saying goaltending, goaltending, goaltending. Mike Smith, as much as we love Mike Smith, is Mike Smith going to be playing when he's Chara years old? Who knows? But I don't think so. They, they do need to figure that out soon-ish. Mm-hmm. But they're kicking ass right now. So you don't even need to get a great goalie, just a pretty good one. Ryan Nugent Hopkins has nine, no, sorry, eight power play goals, which is really good Mm -hmm. from this Leafs fan who doesn't remember what a power play goal looks like. Eight power play goals and 19 power play points. That is extremely good. McDavid has more power play points, 35, than Nugent Hopkins has points, 33. Nugent Hopkins is the third highest scoring Oilers forward. So that's... I don't get it. How are you alive? How are you a person? How are we made of the same material? <laughs> so is the, the competent bum strategy, it shouldn't be you have two guys and then 10 for, forwards who are just there to just be like, I'm, I'm just guy. Like you should probably have a collection of skilled forwards. Yeah. I think, know? I think what Adam said about, uh, you know, him making other players look worse. It's not that they can't play with him. It's just that, remember remember what I was saying? Most players would succeed on your top line because that's what they're used to. Mm -hmm. Now, all these guys who could potentially be first line guys are now second, third, and fourth because... Yeah, but then you're playing against lesser competition. Yeah, that's true. Your best lines are going up against McDavid and and you should be overperforming because they take up so much attention. Like the the way the Leafs beat McDavid in that little stretch, we're just throwing waves and waves at uh, Leon and Connor. And so the rest of the team should have this advantage of like, hey, everybody's looking at the star. Let's go get some of our own points. It just seems like they haven't gathered enough skill on this team to be like, okay, we can win everything because we have McDavid and Dreisaitl. And like, that's, that's just bad management. Ah, they're still Man, did that three-game series wake up the beast? But they're still pretty great. Yeah, but they're, they're still great. <laughs> still pretty great. <laughs> big, yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, like in no other division would they be any higher than fourth. Who's is that, that true? Boy? That is true. Oh wow! Yeah. I didn't. In no other that. division would they be any higher than fourth. Um, wow. so which makes got... the North look shitty, but the North plays the North. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I don't know. I don't know if that says anything, but yeah, you've got. Teams like the, the the disparity between the best teams and the worst teams in the West, Central, and the East is much higher. Right. Um, mm-hmm. You know, this is a division that was supposed to, uh, you know, supposed to see the Ottawa Senators be shitty. Well, the Ottawa Senators have 22 wins. And uh, I think there isn't a another division where the second last place team, or sorry, the second last place team and the last place team in the North Division both have 20 plus wins. Whereas, you know, you look at the East Division, Jersey's got 19, Buffalo's got 15, which is shockingly high. Uh, Detroit has 19 and Columbus have 18 in the Central. And then Anaheim's got 17 and they're the last place team. And then you've got LA with 21 because they had that hot start. But they've been garbage. Late. You know, it's unlikely, but there is there is still a situation where Ottawa could finish fifth in the North. Oh, yeah. They would have to win their last game. Uh, well, actually, they don't have to win their last game. The Calgary just basically needs to lose the rest of them. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and Ottawa could like lose one game in overtime or something like that. But there are three teams in the North with seven wins in their last 10. And they are Toronto, who's in first, Edmonton, who's in second, and Ottawa. Pretty I cool. told you at the beginning of this season, I told I, I am not surprised that they missed the playoffs. Or that they are, you know, could still potentially finish last in mm-hmm. the division. But this team is not going to be shitty for long. No, no. way. Yeah. No way. They're not shitty now. Right. <laughs> they're not shitty now. I think they're playoff contenders as early as next season. Yeah. For all the talk about the North Division being like the weak division, it's not weak. It's just balanced. Mm-hmm. Like everybody is like, oh, they're going to beat up on Ottawa and Vancouver is going to be terrible and all this stuff. No, they're all kind of decent. The and then there's the good... least at the top. The Leafs have good records against basically everyone in the North, except Ottawa. Um, But, like, who have they really just kicked their ass? Like, you know how the Oilers have had a couple games where they, like, ran up the score on Ottawa? It was like 8-0, 8-1, 2-0. 
something like that. I don't that. think they've had that. I mean, unless maybe a couple of Vancouver games. The early, the really early season Vancouver games are the closest, really, the Leafs came to just dominance. Mm-hmm. Like, why bother playing the rest of the game dominance? You know what I mean? For the most part, it's they get three or four, and then they do their best to shut it down, which is not the Leafs we've been accustomed to <laughs> over the past few years. It's yeah, because they well they would try to shut it down and they just flat out couldn't. <laughs> yeah, but like you, you, we've so. watched the Sabers a few times this season, like to to look at the East, and we've gone, why did you show up to the rink? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And the Devils and the Flyers have been a mess. And man, uh, that's a shocker to me. The Flyers, that's just a mind bender. Like you know, it just shows how much goaltending is between the ears because you know Carter Hart's good enough. The you Red know Wings the didn't talent. even the Red Wings didn't even finish last in the Central. For God's sake, all three California teams stink. <laughs> and this and the Sharks really, they looked like uh, they'd be able to hang in there a little bit. No, they nope. Didn't. Kings, nope. Ducks, extraordinarily underratedly bad this season. Uh, Canada, I mean, if the Canucks didn't go through what they had to go through, I think they'd absolutely be in the playoff picture. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's that's in the water. Uh, so taxes, they're difficult. I, I don't understand why they need to be this difficult, but they are. Have you ever wondered what is fact and what is fiction when it comes to those taxes? TurboTax tips can help. It's a quick and easy way to learn how to maximize your tax refund. Expert tips, real people, five minutes or less. Simply search TurboTax tips wherever you listen to podcasts. Um, I would like to mention something, and I think this is very important to our friends in the craziest state in the union, Florida. We're finally getting our first all Florida matchup. The 305s versus the, I think it's the 81, what is it? 81, 813s in We Tampa. now go to Pitbull for his take on the situation. <laughs> I'm kind is of excited right? for this. Like, I, they're, they're pretty close in the standings, 55 games. They're playing... Uh, I believe Florida plays Tampa next and Tampa plays somehow Dallas next. They both play 55. I don't know. That must be a mistake, but whatever. End of the day, uh, Tampa versus Miami or Sunrise is pretty sweet. I think this is really cool for the NHL. And this is a great way going into the ESPN contract to build a little bit of rivalry there because for so long, it's been Tampa's good and, and, and the Panthers suck. And this is kind of nice to see. And it's gotten nasty. There was a bunch of supplemental discipline handed out uh, after their last game and hearings, and I don't remember how they all went. Florida's won five straight. Boy, what an interesting summer they're going to have, too. Mm -hmm. They're going to have to trade their second-best goalie. It's not Bobrovsky. He's not their best either, by the way. Sergey Bobrovsky is the third-best goaltender the Panthers have. Why are they going to have to trade the second-best goalie? That's a bold take. There, uh, uh, Drieger seems to be the guy, and it's going to be Bob and Spencer Knight, mm-hmm. and uh, they're going to have to trade Drieger. Like I already saw an article talking about like how he's going to like be Seattle starter or something like that. He's been really good. He's been really really good. Drieger's also he's a UFA at the end of the year, so they don't have oh. to trade him. Yeah. Well, then never mind. Yeah, he's so walk. it'll be Bobrovsky and Knight. Yeah. To, uh, also in that same division, to all the Nashville fans that reached out. Uh, <laughs> reached out, did they? Man, you were right. You were right. You guys, I mean, to be honest with you, when I, when I made the take that I had, they had a 2% chance of making the playoffs. 2%. Well, if, and they've if won they like were... 14 games out of like 19 since then. It's ridiculous. Good for them. If they were right, what does that they make suck, you... But... If, if they were right, wrong. Like, what are you? I was were wrong. You? I was wrong. Oh, I can't wait for Carolina to steamroll them in four. But but I'm um, uh, go Canes. Uh, but I don't. I don't. I mean, I don't. I, I'm not. This got to be one of the most wrong things you've been wrong about lately. Oh Jesse, I'm sure he's been dumber than this. <laughs> what what else have I been wrong about? I don't know, oh, but this seems thoughts. like it's up there. What yeah, was the other one? You, you you tagged me in something else, Steve. There was something you tagged me in two things on Saturday night. It was oh yeah, I was ripping into you for <laughs> no good reason. It was then, that one, and yeah. Sometimes you just gotta bully your friends for like, sure. I, oh, I don't for know. Sure. I, that's that's I, as far as I'm concerned. That's what is the is the true friendship thing. When people <laughs> yeah. message me, they're like, you know, I think you guys are going a little hard on Steve. I'm like, 
It's because that's the kind of relationship we all have. Oh, uh, <laughs> Sam Bennett. One? Sam Bennett has oh. the most points by any Panthers player in team star. history in 10 games with the team. Goal and an assist tonight. He passes Pavel Bure. That from Steve Goldstein. That's, that's crazy. wild. Now, why ask you this? <laughs> Who does that reflect poorer on? The Flames or Sam Bennett? He just couldn't score in the best division in hockey, the North. The correct answer for that is Adam Wild. Is no, the <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, who who would have thunk that Sam Bennett would break Pavel Bure's record? Man, not you. Not sure everybody <laughs> fucking called that. I'm sure you all were like, no, 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 no. You don't get it. He's going to be like Bure good. Steve and I sat here and we said, you know what? We wouldn't mind him on the Leafs. And now look, we could have had Pavel Bure. And bro, we would have, I think we would have been right. Like if you, they went out and they got Nick Foligno for Nick Foligno style play. Mm -hmm. And I think Bennett is sort of in the same boat. I, he would have fit in on this team just fine. Sam, or I think Calgary wanted more than we would have given up for Foligno. Otherwise Sam Bennett would be a flame from what I've, from what I have heard from people that I have talked to, the Leafs wanted Sam Bennett bad. They wanted yeah. him really oh, bad. Wow. And whatever it was that Calgary was saying he was worth was more than they paid for Foligno. Really, and they ended yes. up getting less from Florida, that, who probably got a "you're not in our division" discount. Yes, that's what they. That's the Leafs wanted Sam Bennett because he would have fit into their plans long term, right? Felino well, explains you know, why Riddick was a third. What's that? That explains why Riddick was a third. Then probably was going to be a, a package deal. Interesting. And I wonder if Trill Living didn't overplay his hand there. Just throwing that out there. Hey, let's. Nope, you're getting away from the conversation. You oh no! I was wrong twice. Wrong. I mean, look at Sam Bennett. He's been great. But I think you got to look at Sam Bennett and, and the fact that he's been great and go, uh, Calgary's had a rough time this year. It's and weird that they weren't able to find a spot in the lineup for him. Yeah, like that I doesn't think that make they didn't any want sense. to. Which they doesn't put him make on sense because line, and he, he didn't perform. They said, "Well, there is that." He like for the game he plays, Calgary looks like a good match. And I don't know, I guess maybe I'm just not seeing it, but for, for all the Nashville fans, let, let me, let me put a bow on it for you, Adam, bless your heart. <laughs> That's good. I like that. Fair. I deserve it. Um, St. Louis. Uh, we, I did get a bunch of uh, uh, Dallas stars fans, by the way, saying I believed in Dallas too. And then a bunch who were like, this team sucks. Don't, don't cheer for them. That was interesting. Um, St. Louis blues fans hit us up. On mass, I don't know if you guys got a bunch of DMs about Bennington, but it seems like with Blues fans, the remember we were talking about him last episode. Yeah, I asked yeah. the question someone, last episode. If you're a Blues fan, reach out to us and tell us what you think of Bennington. Because from the outside looking in, it looks like he's a bit of a hothead and that he can be contentious with fans. So we wanted the fans' perspective on what you guys actually think about your your boy. So from what I read from from you. The, the reaction was decidedly exactly what we said, which was fans love him because he won the cup, but it's also kind of annoying what a hothead he is. Like it just, it was there. Like the messages I got were extremely reasonable. Like when I, when we went in on uh, Blake Wheeler earlier in the season, I got vitriol from, from Jets fans who are usually really nice, but very, very upset with Bennington Stanley cup winning goalie clearly the MVP of the playoffs that year for them, like one of, and people are like, yeah, you know, he's kind of annoying. I mean, he's good, and but he's annoying. You're, you're going to have to do, if you're a leaf who wins the cup, who is on that team, you're, I don't know what you could do to have me turn on you. I, cause if, if the Leafs had Bennington and they won the cup, I bet Jordan, come on with that. That's Hey, you go out there and you have a better attitude next game. All right, get out there. Crazy kid, don't hurt yourself. <laughs> Steve, if the Leafs did win the Cup, would with Jordan Bennington, would he replace James Reimer as your most favorite goalie ever? And Felix Poffin? I don't know either of those men. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> babe. I'm not I'm, your babe. It's, yeah, babe. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry to those men, I, but I don't know them. Okay, fair enough. That's fair not enough. true of James or Felix, but I'll still have the pictures, but... The, the series I really Freeman. want, uh, I don't know, like if we're, you know, we're, as things start to solidify here, I don't know if you guys have a series that you're like super excited about. And obviously we'll get into more of that as the playoffs approach, but there's one that I am dying for a little bit. Well, let's see if he's right. 
And I don't know if it's going to happen because there's only a one point separation, but it looks like Boston, which has played a game less than the Islanders is a point up on the Islanders could be playing Washington. And I want to see the big bad caps play the big bad Bruins. And Pittsburgh Islanders isn't a great matchup for Pittsburgh either because Islanders have kind of run their show in recent they're, memory they're like in the a, playoffs. They're like a boa constrictor. They just kind of hug you too hard, and then it's like just strangling you, right? Yeah, those are two nasty matchups. I know exactly what you're talking about, Adam. I'm excited to see, like, because, okay, because we, we've seen... Trent Frederick for four to seven. Oh man! No. Uh, oh God! TJ sent me a video this morning of him just chirping uh, the Rangers, and he's he's a he's got he's got a good like he's really good at it. <laughs> Is that the Who Wants It video? Yeah, yeah. Oh, what a truck! What a I mean, if you're Boston, if you if you're a Bruins fan in Boston, I would donate blood to save Trent Frederick's life. Like just, just from the from the footage that I've that I've seen. Oh if, my god! If you're the Bruins, though, and you, first off, you're going against Zdeno, which sucks. Like that really sucks. They could have had him the whole year. There's no oh. reason not to resign Zdeno. But beyond, oh, that, I didn't even think of that. Yeah, that's why I want to see it. But then, okay, so now you're Marshan and you're Bergeron, and you have to contend with Tom Wilson. Can you get under Tom Wilson's skin before he gets under yours? No, that is Frederick's assignment. Is it? Is oh, that what you my, do? like a torpedo every now, shift. Is Zidane Chara going to cross check you as hard as he cross checks everybody else? If you're if you're Marchand or Bergeron, uh, can I can I answer that? Please. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, he is, he is, he's gonna, and then he'll give you a wink and a smile. Actually, no, he won't. Like that's that's for the end of the series. Like I don't think. Zidane Char is like that. Like everything that you've ever heard about him is he's a great guy and a great leader. And he seems like a great friend. He, like he really does. He seems like a gentle giant on the ice. He is a hardened criminal <laughs> and he's got a job to do. And he's going to take that job out on you. Uh, I it doesn't matter how long he's known you even worse uh, that guy was hanging around you in the training room and he saw all the muscles you were rolling out. Guess what? He's attacking here. He I heard you want me to, you want me to roll out your back there, Patrice. Oh, it's gonna, I don't think it's going to be a bad or a, a good time for any of them after the whistle that after the whistle, that's where he's going to make his money. Mid forties. Zidane Chara defensively is a liability. He is. So the Bruins would be wise to use their speed against him, blow by him, hope to draw a penalty. And this will be the first time in their careers they'll be arguing for Char to get a call. It'll Oh, wow. That is a fun little Petri dish of a series, Adam. Thank you for pointing that out. Is there any any other ones that you guys are in, in particular looking forward to? I did. I wanted to bring up the All Florida just because it's All Florida. I think Vegas will kill St. Louis. So the the two three matchup in the West right now, and it's unlikely it'll change, but it could, is Colorado Minnesota, and Minnesota while taking steps and acknowledging that they've taken steps, I did not know they were like this. I, I didn't know, know Kaprizov was like this. Man. Nobody could have predicted. Like I know that everybody was like, he's good, he's good, he's good, but like, whoa, the whole team. <laughs> whoa. Though. The whole team, like it's, if, if Colorado gets past Minnesota, which I think they will, because I, I just think so much of this team, the series I want to see the most, um, probably outside of the North division. I want to see Vegas take on Colorado. They just seem, they've just seemed like the two best teams in the league. And what does that say about Minnesota? Who's one point behind Colorado and could, could they? Oh, no, I was going to say they could catch Vegas, but no, the best they could do is tie them and finish second. Ooh, I I want to see that. I think I think Colorado, Minnesota is going to be a must watch. And whoever wins that is, I'm sorry, Blues fans, they're going to play Vegas. And that's going to be an extraordinary series. Jesse, you have any thoughts? The one thing I'm not excited for, I assume next week we'll have a full playoff preview episode where we'll 100%. pick our Monday. series and all that Monday. stuff. Yeah, yeah, we'll do that on Monday. Um, 
the one thing I'm not excited about is any of the one four matchups. So really, really, I was, I was like, even the Leafs. I was spacing out my bracket, and I was like, okay, what do I got? Looking over, we got a week to go. We'll see, we'll see what's looking. I'm like, I feel like every one four matchup is going to be not, not necessarily a walk, but I'm picking the one seed each time because, like, I don't think. St. Louis has anything going against Vegas. I don't think Carolina. I don't think Nashville is going to knock off Carolina. I don't think Montreal is going to give the Leafs any trouble. And then the Islanders, the Barzal Satlax, they got scratched by Trots last week, and they got one out of four points against the Sabers. Like they're limping. I know they beat the Devils like five one. What it's two the Devils, ago, but it's the Devils, right? And so I, I see them limping into the playoffs, and I think Pittsburgh's going to win that matchup with Crosby back at full four so like i think all those all the interesting stuff right now is happening in the two threes so those are the ones i'm looking forward to because the one fours i I can tell you right now i'm picking all the one seeds i still think uh boy i've learned my lesson and i'm putting respect on the islanders name so i think you're wrong there but the other three uh have you watched them lately (laughs) (laughs) did you watch them versus buffalo (laughs) admittedly no but i think well they did uh those were the two michael hauser wins Um, but those, uh, I think the Islanders, you know, they have so much playoff experience the past couple of years. I, I think they're playing at like 70%. If that. Yeah. Scratching guys. Well, that I don't understand. Yeah. Like, was it was he healthy scratched? Yeah, he got benched. Trotz came in and was like, you know, this isn't what we want to do, but we need our guys. Hey, the quote is, after Trotz sit- on sitting Barzal, this was like May, this is May 4th. Matt is a good pro. He's going to be a big part of what we're doing. Just want to get him in the right place, feeling good, so he's a good player for us in the playoffs. Ahead of the playoffs. This, this, is, this is what it's about, man. This is you, what it's you, about. How many Leafs are being scratched right now going to the playoffs? It's a different situation. Yeah, because one team's struggling, so I'm not picking them, and I don't think it's gonna be competitive. Yeah, I just, I just feel like these teams, on their way down, which I'm not saying they are, but when, when they're not as good as they were the year before, we go ah, there's the descent. No man, I think they're gonna find a switch. They're gonna turn it on, and it's not gonna be a fun four to seven for Pittsburgh. What do you, what are your thoughts on Pittsburgh right now, though? Well, oh, they're a wagon. Like they are the favorite. Uh-huh. No doubt. They are the favorite. But out of the four seeds, like Montreal, probably like, I mean, listen, based on what we've seen this season, there's no reason to think the Leafs would lose to them. And this is the part where we clip that part and we put it out if the Leafs lose game one. But <laughs> they have, they were a better playoff team last year. Yep. They made it farther. farther. If yep. you're the Habs, you got to be thinking last year we didn't. Or sorry, last year they didn't. We did. Um, so I look at them and I go, okay, you know, you got to respect them. Nashville, you got to respect their experience. But if you're Carolina, you're like, well, we're Carolina. Like the, Carolina doesn't have the problem that the Leafs do. Where, well, you know, last year they were really good. Carolina goes, well, last year we were still Carolina. And the year before we were also Carolina. Um, the Blues are boy they're just gonna get shattered by vegas man 57 points versus 80 like i know you won the cup the captain's not there anymore it's a very very different season you didn't do well in last year's playoffs um so i honestly out of the four seeds i think the habs are the second most intimidating Mm. frankly at least based on situation and will carrie price be back for the playoffs it they're making it seem like he's gonna be but like even though it's Carey Price who's really good in the playoffs it does seem kind of unreasonable to assume he's going to be great after like dude let's assume Freddie's fully healthy which Ooh. I don't know um uh, like here's there's, the quote. it's unreasonable to assume he's going to be <laughs> back to number one form here's the quote for uh the carrie price and brendan gallagher so they won't see any regular season time they're both going to miss the rest of regular season but uh dominic ducharme says that we're confident that all will be there the guys are progressing carrie price and brendan gallagher are expected to be healthy for the start of the playoffs. And at this point, why play? Like, who cares? Yeah, and Deneau was a confusing one. 
he uh, he missed that last game against the Leafs with a concussion, and no one could really find how he did it. Hmm. Um, uh, Tic Tac Tomar was uh, he posted a gif, and the closest thing he could find to like heavy impact for Dano is he tried to hit someone on the end boards and kind of missed. Like it's it's just very confusing. I think all these teams that have it locked up are just coasting and resting, guys. And I think the I think the Islanders, it was probably disciplinary with Barzal, but like even if he's at 95%, all right, you go and rest up and we'll get that other five. I, I don't I really don't think you read too much into that right now. Can I tell you what's given me anxiety with one one to four series? <laughs> is, Which one? Is it the Leafs? <laughs> Clearly it's the Leafs. Okay. Uh, is that the Leafs management will be dumb enough to put Freddie Anderson in a game? I don't think what in the playoffs? Yeah. Which game? Any game. I don't think so. He's been he's been bad in the AHL. And everybody's like, well, don't read too much into the game one. And then game two, not good. How was game two? I didn't see that. Uh, uh, he got we're... better as the game went on, but okay. he did allow four goals. And if I'm not mistaken, he allowed the first shot he faced in the second game, which like, holy shit. How many Leaf games did you see that in? In games where he was good. Hmm. In games, did, are, oh, yeah. Did happens. he still look injured? Uh you know, was he was he like he not said moving as freely? He said earlier this year, there's no way he's going to be fully healthy. Like th- this is the thing with Freddie. Uh, I think he's in the same position as a lot of NHL players. I think he just deals with he just deals with stuff. There are players who, you know, they make a decision. Okay, I'm going to deal with this in 12 years. <laughs> if I, if I can hold off surgery, I'll deal with this once I retire. Not, I don't know if that's him necessarily. Um, I, I did see, I saw a tweet from someone who I don't think meant ill, but mm-hmm. what, what they said basically was it doesn't look like his body. It looks like his mind, your body screws with your mind, mm-hmm. right? If, if I'm worried about doing this movement and I'm going to put myself out for the rest of the season or I'm going to have to take myself out of the game or I'm not worried. I, I'm worried. I'm going to be, I'm not going to be explosive enough. Like that, that, this was the thing with him. He's such a, he was such a cookie cutter, rock him, sock him robot goalie. And you could count on him being in his net and making these athletic saves and the cookie cutter saves as well. When he's not in that mindset, which could be caused by injuries, and I think it is, he's wild. He's all over the place. And that's what I saw in the clips that I saw from those two Marley's games, and that's what we saw earlier this season. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's what we saw, you know what, when Campbell went through his little slump, that's what we saw out of him, too. You see a goalie flying all over the place these days. It's rarely a good thing. Um, now you see him, and it, there it is, ice in the veins. It's exactly as advertised, you know, back when, when he was at the world juniors. Um, That's why you got Riddick, man. Uh, You went out and got Riddick so that you don't have to make rash decisions with Freddie. Um, You know, you're allowed to rehab and face shots and everything as the playoffs continue. Like there's definitely a scenario where let's say the Leafs do win around hooray. And then they're in the second round and you know, game one, Campbell gets hurt and oh shit. And then Riddick plays game two and he wins it. And then game three is, oh God, he's, oh my God, we can't go back to this guy for game four. And you go, what about Freddie? Sure. And you put him in and hopefully he's ready. Like I, I keep concern, going back to, but my I don't know what the Leafs could have done differently. My concern is this. If, if it, this is where my anxiety comes from where the Leafs are so loyal to Freddie and so believe in the goalie that last left us in 2019, frankly, has not been the same goalie since. Yeah. Um, they so believe in that, that they robbed Johnson, Doug Flutie, this and Buffalo Bills fans know what I'm talking about. I've I mentioned this before. There was a wild card game. Doug Flutie got the bills there. And uh, the owner said, well, we're paying Rob Johnson 5 million bucks a year to be our quarterback. Why isn't he playing? So they started him. The uh, Bills should have won the game. They stunk and they lost and they were out. And I really hope that the Leafs go, okay, here's, we're going to go with the guy that's working. Just put Campbell in. 
For God's sakes. I have every confidence they're going to. I don't. Please give me the confidence that you have. (laughs) So I think it was, well, first of all, Adam, careful what you wish for. You don't want this shit. (laughs) Second of all, I think it was Dave Amber on the broadcast talking about um, with Campbell. And it's something that I, I, I watched it happen and I didn't even realize it was happening. Earlier in the season, what did I keep harping on? Campbell's never been a starter in mm-hmm. the NHL. How do we know he can do it? And the Leafs went, great question. Let's make him a starter. Mm-hmm. And they've probably been giving him more starts than they should have because they're like, what are here's the starter here? workload. Yeah, Here it is. And what's he done? He's 17-2-2. Two and two. So I think those are Mike my, Smith numbers, by the way. <laughs> like those my are... concerns were totally valid. It's that's a dude. It's a it's a question you have to ask if a guy's never been a starter. How you can't just blindly trust that he's going to be, the, and the Leafs didn't blindly trust it either. They went out and did a science experiment. They go, let's see, and if he can't handle it, we open the Dave Riddick door, which is door number three. But he's handled it. He's been great. He's the team's starting goaltender. Let's call him what he is. Okay. Adam, with, they're, they're not as dumb as you think. Don't worry. It's not that I think they're dumb. I just think sometimes we tend to overthink things. Like maybe what I'm doing right now. Let's get to the press conference, shall we? Growing up, cereal was one of the best parts about being a kid. But um, I had to give it up because I realized it was full of sugar and junk and the things that you really shouldn't eat. So like everybody else trying to cart down on carbs and sugar and unhealthy food, I realized I can't just eat everything that I want anymore. So, you know, you have, you know, protein shakes and vegetable shakes and powders and just, ugh. that's why I think you should try the thing that I tried, which is magic spoon, zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein. So you can get strong and only net four grams of carbs for each serving. And that's only 140 calories per serving. It's keto-friendly. It's gluten-free. It's grain-free. It's soy-free. It's low-carb and GMO-free. The variety pack includes four flavors of cocoa, fruity, frosted, and peanut butter. It's absolutely delicious. And if you go to magicspoon.com slash STP to grab your variety pack and try it today, well, you get $5 off your first order. Again, use our promo code STP at checkout and get yourself $5 off your first order at magicspoon.com. Again, that's magicspoon.com slash SDP. The Presser SDP. The Steve Dangle Press Conference. Now, this uh, press conference will be abbreviated because we've got about 10 minutes left. So, Jesse, take it from here. This is from Graham are you surprised by how low the Brindamore contract is being reported? So it came out today that uh, he's he they're offering him like 1.8 and he wants above that plus his staff to be compensated. What do you guys think? Um, I think he doesn't need the money. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I, he made his money as a player. And a lot of these coaches, though, haven't. Mm-hmm. And Rod Brindamore is actually a lot younger. Uh, than a lot of these coaches and they played in an era an era uh, where they didn't make a ton of money rod did rod got to make a big old bunch of money as a player and i do love and appreciate what he's doing for his staff but i think the hurricanes you know perhaps rightfully after essentially being put on the spot you know everyone oh rod brindamore such a great guy i think the hurricanes were like oh yeah prove it Here's, yeah, we'll give you everything you want. Here's 1.8. You know, hey, we'll sign this guy, this guy, this guy. You know, you, oh, make sure you guys get a better room and fresh towels and all that shit. We'll give you everything you want, Rod. You can be the hero to, to everybody. Here's less than market value. Like, I, there's no reason to assume Rod would get less than like four mil. No, but here's what he's doing. He is assuring his legacy as a coach. And to do that, he is keeping his staff. He's already made his money, as Steve alluded to. And by the way, $1.8 million. Uh, Can I? Yeah, please give me. Um, I but don't know if I've that, made that in my life. He made $50 million as a player. Guy's got the money. And he is ensuring that his head coaching job, which he does not have to do. He could be a, Rod should be on a golf course somewhere, but that's not in Rod's head. Rod is far too competitive for that. 
Rod would explode. He would. He would totally explode. This is why this is perfect for him. He is assuring that the all-star staff he has around him, and make no mistake, the, the Kane staff is absolutely incredible from the scouts to the uh, uh, trainers to everybody. They're, they've done an amazing job. Um, and they're, what, fighting for the president's trophy right now? Yep. Uh, I mean, they're probably going to get it, aren't they? Uh, uh, let me see. Let me see. So I think it's them and the Golden Knights, isn't it? Toronto's uh, still yeah. in there. No, uh, Toronto. <laughs> no, they're not. Nah, I don't uh, think they can. They are. The well, Leafs could tie Why? both those teams but lose in wins. Yeah. So it looks like it comes down to Vegas in, and Carolina, and Vegas has two games and Carolina only has one. So even if they don't win the President's Trophy, whatever, they had a great year. Um, the, rea- the reality of this is you, if you've got a great team – and your main concern is winning and legacy, who cares if you only make $1.8 million this year? Rod Brindamore knows all you need to do is win one Stanley Cup and you're a head coach for the next 20 years. Randy Carlisle, John Tortorella, not that John's bad, but you know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? Like, think about guys that won the Cup 15 plus years ago. Most of them still have jobs. And most of them are making good money. Barry Trotz was going to get $4 million whether he won the cup with the Caps or not. He was going to get it. You're right. Yeah. Joe Quinville. I mean, he's an incredible coach. But, like, Joe Quinville didn't need to coach anymore. But he's coming back, and he's making a pile of money. If Brindamore knows, if, he really, if money was the goal, which it isn't, just win the cup. Uh, they just have a different mindset than I do. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I look at Cliff Fletcher, and I'm like, go home, Cliff. Like, and it's nothing, <laughs> it's nothing against him. It's just cliff. That's, that's enough. You could have retired when I was a child. Like, right. what, what are you doing? But he's still there. Cause he loves it. Good for him. Mm-hmm. Good for him. And good for Rod. Not that he signed it yet, supposedly, but he will. There it is. By the way, today's press conference will be sponsored by David because Adam, in a fit of rage, decided to cancel Who Wore the Crown last episode. He was having a grumpy day. So, David... <laughs> it's not a good segment anymore. We're dropping it. All right. We got it. We'll f- we got to figure it out because there's a charity aspect. Yeah. We, sh- we should close oh. it with, like, the season, maybe. Yeah. Then, we'll know, what we're going to do. We're going to shout out somebody at the beginning of every episode. How's that sound? Or in the press conference, wherever. We'll decide. Yeah, so it's better I, than just axing it. Right. <laughs> Completely. <laughs> so I just want to shout out Dave. He's a New Zealander in... He's a Canadian in New Zealand. And he donated to um, a children's hospital over there. Uh, they're called Starship. And they saved his little daughter's life last year when she was born, Zita. She was born... Um, he said she was born as the same color as the Leafs home jersey, dark blue and kind of white. She was booked Jesus. to go into the uh, NICU, but at the last movement, her breathing improved and she avoided the dreaded intensive care unit. So he was beyond thankful that his little girl had this place at her disposal if she needed uh, where she would get the best possible care. So shout out children's hospitals all over the world. I know we like to donate to sick kids so, and um and David here donated to his local one in Auckland. So yeah, shout out uh, starships. And uh, that is, that's incredible. Love that. So we're going to keep the charity angle going. It just, I oh, think yeah. we, there's a better way to deliver. Now, yes. one last thing I'd like to mention as a fun little tidbit before we go, mm-hmm. the Philadelphia Flyers, if you attend the game, you get a free Johnson and Jackson COVID vaccine today. Nice. Are you, are you serious? I'm serious. They, uh, they took that from the oh. Atlanta Braves. All weekend Brilliant. they were doing uh, yeah free vaccines and the the Braves one you get tickets too if you sign up to get your vaccine so you get free tickets for getting your vaccine yeah they're like if you pre register to get your vaccine when you come to the Braves game I think it was last weekend last Friday Saturday or it might have been this past Friday Saturday you get uh, free tickets to a future Braves game as well and we're we are honest. sword fighting each other for this thing in yeah. Canada and now well, it's said, getting better the Flyers are doing this. do they have a free ticket thing as well when you get your vaccine yeah. Yeah, Flyers, it's Johnson yeah. Johnson. It's I think it's the single dose too. You only need the one. Wow, that's awesome. Jesse, by the way, you've got news. 
Oh yeah, I got my vaccine. Shout out uh, Vax Hunters Canada. Adam and I actually work. We work in a, in a. They're calling them hot spots. Here, anybody not from Ontario, the hot spots are given priorities uh, to get your vaccine before it's open to like the general public. So this weekend, I went to one of the pop ups for our hot spot that we work in, and I got my vaccine. I my Wi Fi has been a lot better at home. I've noticed, and I just want to say I really love Bill Gates. He's a fantastic human being. <laughs> Jesse's his divorce lawyer. I uh, yes, I am. <laughs> we all are. Once you get the vaccine, you are now his lawyer. And one of us. Really, one, one of us. us. <laughs> Google gobble. Google gobble. One of us. Microsoft Vista is great. <laughs> <laughs> Remember Microsoft Vista? <laughs> oh yeah, that was a good rollout. Anyway, uh, we'll be back Thursday. Love you. Talk to you then. Uh, and the playoffs are upon us. How exciting. So what is the actual start? Funny, funny thing about the playoffs, I was reading this today on NHL.com. They don't have a start date for the playoffs yet. I was going to ask, does anyone know? decided a start date, which is fascinating. So it's possible there is a scenario where the playoffs will begin yeah. and the North Division will still have games. Yeah, Vancouver will still be playing. It, right. Why? Yeah. It's No, like, and they could even, I think, I think... Because the, the Leafs are playing what Friday? I, they don't know. <laughs> they, they there is no yeah. start date for the playoffs because they have no idea. Now, here's why that's a bad idea. <laughs> well, somebody gets injured in Vancouver in that game. They should really shut it down. Just shut oh, yeah. it down. I shut it down. Uh, I get it. I get it. What do you shut get? It. Well, I I get. Oh, we have. We have sponsors, and we have this, yeah, and we have that. That's true, yeah. guys. Well, yeah. It's a different season. the The sponsor stuff, where there's money at stake, makes so much more sense than the silly draft arguments. The draft yeah. lot, fucking go to a an arbitrator of, and figure that shit out. Some like, of the some of the arguments were okay. So if you finish a, a couple points up, then your lottery ball changes. But like, come on. Mm. Yeah. I, get, I get the like you said i get the okay you sold a package to an advertiser for 56 games you have to you have an obligation contract contractually to fulfill your advertisers uh 56 games like that makes yeah. Sense. yeah yeah tune in to watch terrible <laughs> genuinely terrible hockey from guys who literally don't want to be there right. you know what i mean by the end of it They'll play their ass off in the last game just because they're happy it's over. It's, I feel bad for the Canucks. So I do not envy their position at all. Yeah. Anyway, what a cheery note to end on. And shout out the Leafs for getting vaccinated and the Canadian Montreal Canadiens. So there you go. Awesome. Love it. So good. I'm so jealous. I'll be soon. I'm on a wait list. I'll be soon. Right. I'm on several as well. Here's hoping. Fingers crossed. Love you. Talk to you soon. If you're in Philadelphia, go to that damn Flyers game and get your vaccine. We love you. We'll see you Thursday. Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle at Adam W-Y-L-D-E and at Jesse Blake. Connection complete.